Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Spinosaurids are among the most distinctive looking theropods, with a frustratingly patchy fossil record. All known members of the group were at least somewhat piscivorous, although likely had broader carnivorous diets as well, possessing elongated narrow jaws superficially similar to those of crocodilians largely conical teeth and powerful muscular forelimbs. The nostrils of these animals were retracted to a position further back on the head than in most other theropods, and they had bony crests on their heads along the midline of their skulls. They also possessed three-fingered hands that bore an enlarged claw on the first digit. In addition, several genera had elongated neural spines running along the vertebrae of the back, which formed a sail that was covered in skin or possibly a fatty hump. Members of the family range from roughly 6 to 14 metres long, with the massive and controversial Spinosaurus itself being among the largest of all theropods. The first definitive Spinosaurids make their appearance during the early Cretaceous roughly 130 million years ago, although a few singular tooth and claw fossils dating back to the Middle Jurassic have been tentatively assigned to the family. These include a singular well-preserved pedal claw recovered from Bathonian age deposits in Rajasthan, northwestern India, to which its describers assigned a basal position within Spinosauridae. If this is true, then this specimen is by far the oldest remains of the family, and actually does match up with the predicted phylogenetic divergence point of Spinosaurs. Although their precise classification is still a little bit uncertain, most studies have found these animals to have been close relatives of megalosaurids within a broader megalosauroidea. However, this has not been universally accepted, with it sometimes being argued that megalosauroidea is not a natural grouping, being more of a grade that led up to allosauroidea. Regardless, spinosaurids and megalosaurids are still almost always placed in close proximity. Given that the oldest megalosaurids, such as Duria venata, are known from Middle Jurassic deposits circa 168 million years ago, then spinosaurids must also have diverted around this time as well, giving validity to the aforementioned Indian claw fossil. Presumably, these animals evolved from more quote-unquote typical terrestrial carnivorous theropods although as yet no transitional forms have been identified, with the early Cretaceous Spinosaurs already being very derived. Interestingly, some recent studies have found the unusual Middle Jurassic Monolophosaurus to be either the most basal Spinosaurid or the sister taxon to the family, although the position of this genus is constantly in flux. Another very fragmentary genus known from a single find, in this case being a tooth, is Ostafricosaurus from the late Jurassic Tendaguru formation in Tanzania. Although historically thought to belong to an early Spinosaurid, this has been questioned more recently, with the tooth more likely originating from the mouth of a Ceratosaurid. Aside from potential basal forms such as this, Spinosaurids can be divided into two major subfamilies, with these being the Baryonychinae and the Spinosaurinae. The Baryonychines were on average the more modestly sized and basal of the two, although they were still relatively large by non-avian theropod standards, particularly common in early Cretaceous European deposits, although with more sparse fossil material found elsewhere, this lineage can be differentiated from the Spinosaurines by their either small or absent sails, and their even more proportionally elongated jaws. Their teeth were largely conical and lacked serrations, similar to those of modern crocodilians, which indicates a diet mostly composed of slippery fish, although preserved stomach content from a few specimens have shown that these carnivores were not picky eaters, probably scavenging and opportunistically hunting smaller dinosaurs. The best known member of the subfamily, as well as the type genus, was Baryonyx, the second Spinosaurid to be scientifically described. Native to the UK during the Beremian stage of the early Cretaceous, between 130 and 125 million years ago, the holotype specimen is one of the most complete theropod skeletons from the UK, and remains the most complete Spinosaurid so far known. It measured between 7.5 and 10 metres, or 25 to 33 feet long, and potentially weighed up to 2 tonnes, possessing elongated narrow jaws similar to those of a modern gharial, even having a rudimentary second palate in the roof of the mouth, unlike the vast majority of other theropods. Living in a humid subtropical region of the Wealden Formation, with plenty of slow-flowing rivers and swamps, Baryonyx probably fed mostly on fish that were snapped up in its jaws and swallowed whole. In 2016, paleontologist Christopher Hendricks and colleagues 
found that adult spinosaurs could displace their mandibular rami, or the halves of their lower jaw, sideways when the jaw was depressed allowing these animals to gulp down relatively large prey items, much like living pelicans. Baryonyx has also been found in association with the remains of a juvenile iguanodon, suggesting that it either scavenged or actively hunted smaller dinosaurs when the opportunity arose, probably utilising its large claws and powerful forelimbs to restrain and tear prey apart. Studies of Baryonyx's well-preserved brain case show that its overall brain size and structure was similar to those of other terrestrial non-Salurosaurian theropods, with no obvious features linked to a semi-aquatic heron-like lifestyle, although as already noted, their jaws were already heavily modified for hunting fish. Additionally, its bones were dense and heavily built, like those of living penguins, possibly suggesting that Baryonyx spent quite a lot of time submerged. In 2021, two additional Wielden Baryonychine Spinosaurids were described from far more fragmentary remains, with these being Ceratosuchops and Riparovenator. These were almost certainly not contemporaries of Baryonyx, being native to the Wessex formations circa 125 million years ago. Both genera were roughly comparable to Baryonyx in terms of size, measuring between 8 and 9 metres, or 26 to 29 feet long and are known from isolated skull fragments, while the Riparovenator holotype also consists of tail vertebrae as well. The description of these two animals brought about the creation of the clade Serratus sucopsini, which was found to also contain the African genus Sucomimus, native to Niger between 125 and 112 million years ago. This was a big animal, reaching 9.5 to 11 metres, or between 31 to 36 feet in length, and weighing 2.8 to 3.8 metric tons. Like the Wielden Spinosaurs, Suchomimus inhabited extensive freshwater floodplains with numerous rivers, albeit in a region with a more tropical climate that likely experienced seasonal dry periods. Unlike its English cousins, this animal also possessed enlarged neural spines on its vertebrae, which were tallest over the hips forming a low sail that was probably utilised as a form of visual communication and indication of age, health and fitness. It dwelt in the Earl Haas formation, and probably hunted the contemporary large coelacanth Morsonia, with studies of its skeleton indicating that Suchomimus possessed relatively lightly built bones, and therefore hunted in comparatively shallow water like a giant crane. Another hotspot of Spinosaurid diversity was early Cretaceous Spain, where up to five different genera have been found, although the exact classification of these animals is hampered, once again, by very partial remains. These include Protathlitis, which sounds like some kind of skin infection, but actually means champion in Greek, as well as the cooler sounding Rio Havanatrix, which means huntress from Larioca. The other major lineage of Spinosaurids were the Spinosaurines, which possessed different adaptations and a wider, more southern distribution. Also, this family tended to possess taller neural spines and therefore larger sails, as well as having jaws more capable of processing meat taken from carcasses, in contrast to the Baryonychines, which seemed to have done little oral processing. Among the most basal of these was a probably dubious genus Siamosaurus from the early Cretaceous of Thailand, once again represented only by teeth, it has recently been argued that this is not enough to form the basis of a whole genus, with the teeth belonging to an indeterminate Spinosaurine instead. Teeth assigned to Siamosaurus have been found in association with the bones of sauropods, providing more evidence for scavenging in this group of theropods. Interestingly, several currently unnamed Spinosaurid specimens have been uncovered from Thailand, with these being known from postcranial elements. Similar partial Spinosaurid remains have also been found in China and Japan, indicating that these animals were present across Asia. The only Asian Spinosaurid represented by decent material is Ichthyovenator, which was native to Laos during the Aptian stage of the early Cretaceous, between 120 and 113 million years ago. It was relatively large, measuring between 8.5 and 10 metres long, and weighed in the region of 2.4 tonnes. Like many other Spinosaurids, Ichthyovenator had a sail on its back and hips that was formed by the elongated neural spines of its vertebrae. Uniquely among known members of the family, Ichthyovenator's sail was divided in two over the hips and had a wave-like curvature. Like other Spinosaurians, this genus also possessed enlarged neural spines running along the length of the tail, which has been suggested to have been an adaptation for tail-propelled swimming 
Although this remains controversial, it has also been proposed that the so-called Eumorella taxon, a putative Australian spinosaurid and singular tooth fossil, may have been a close relative of Ichthyovenator, although this more likely belonged to a Megaraptoran. At roughly this time, Spinosaurids were also native to South America, including the strangely named Brazilian genus Irritator. This was one of the smallest members of the family at 6 to 8 meters long, and dotted in the Romualdo formation, which was then a tropical coastal ecosystem dotted with lagoons and teeming with dozens of fish species, which supported a diverse array of pterosaurs as well as Irritator. Studies of its brain case have found that this animal possessed a proportionally large flocculus, which suggests that the theropod was capable of making quick head movements, almost certainly utilised to snap up struggling fish. Its bite force was weak for a theropod of its size, although the jaws could be opened and closed very quickly. However, Irritator clearly also hunted and scavenged smaller land animals when given the opportunity, with a tooth belonging to the genus discovered still embedded into the fossil neck vertebrae of an ornithochyrid pterosaur, likely with a wingspan of 3.3 metres or 11 feet. The most derived Spinosaurians were members of the clade Spinosaurini, which unsurprisingly contained the infamous genus Spinosaurus. <laughs> Where to even begin with this one? The genus was the first Spinosaurid to be scientifically described, all the way back in 1915, when German paleontologist Ernst Stromer published an article assigning the holotype to the genus Spinosaurus. The remains consisted of a partial lower jaw, vertebrae with tall neural spines, and isolated teeth. The holotype material was taken back to Munich, but was unfortunately destroyed during the Second World War by Allied bombing, although Stromer's detailed illustrations of the bones survived. These first remains were uncovered in Cenomanian age deposits in Egypt, Although, as of 2025, there have been five additional specimens assigned to Spinosaurus, both from Egypt, Morocco, and potentially Tunisia. Due to the initially fragmentary nature of the fossils and the destruction of the holotype, Spinosaurus remained quite a mysterious animal until better material was found in the 1990s. The genus made a famous appearance as the main villain of Jurassic Park 3 where it was dubiously portrayed as a hyper-aggressive super-predator capable of easily bringing down a T-Rex. Spinosaurus was seen as suitable for this role due to its massive size, being among the largest of all theropods, at potentially 14 metres or 46 feet long, and weighing about 7.4 tonnes. The skull of Spinosaurus was long, low and narrow, similar to that of a modern crocodilian and bore straight conical teeth with no to little serrations. Like other spinosaurids, the forelimbs were relatively large and powerfully muscled, equipped with sharp hooked claws. The distinctive neural spines of Spinosaurus, which were long extensions of the vertebrae, grew to at least 1.65 meters or 5.4 feet long, and were likely to have been covered with skin, forming a sail-like structure. Although some authors have suggested that the spines were covered in fat and formed a hump, Traditionally restored with long hind limbs like those of fully terrestrial theropods, most recent studies since 2014 have supported far shorter hind limbs and a small reduced pelvis, in addition to a broad tail that also possessed tall spines. These traits have been argued to show that Spinosaurus may have been a largely aquatic animal, spending much of its time submerged and swimming after the many species of big fish that lived in the river deltas of Cenomanian North Africa. This view is very controversial, however, with many other experts arguing that Spinosaurus was probably a wading animal, much like an enormous heron, with both the sail and deep tail functioning as display structures. However it lived, Spinosaurus dwelt in arid to semi-arid ecosystems, with those individuals that live in the Baharia formation, what is now Egypt, may have contended with shoreline conditions on tidal flats and channels, living in mangrove forests alongside similarly large dinosaurian predators such as Bahariosaurus and Tamari Raptor. In the Kemkem -Kem beds of Morocco, it lived alongside the huge Carcharodontosaurus and the mysterious Deltadromius, probably avoiding competition with these predators by focusing mostly on river-dwelling prey, such as large relatives of the modern coelacanth and the up to 4 meter long saw-skate Oncopristis. However, Spinosaurus was likely also an opportunistic carnivore, both hunting smaller prey and scavenging like other members of the group. Another potential North African Spinosaurid, Sigil Massasaurus, also from the Cenomanian about 99 to 94 million years ago, 
may or may not be synonymous with Spinosaurus. These were the last members of the family, with the whole group seemingly vanishing from the fossil record about 93 million years ago, potentially as a result of the Cenomanian Turonian extinction event, going out with a bang with the impressive Spinosaurus. Their demise may have been brought about by their somewhat specialised ecological niche, although this too, like almost everything else about these river dragons, is subject to debate and controversy. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be going back to the Triassic to cover the very first true pterosaurs, as I've already covered their more basal legerpeted cousins. See you again soon. Cheerio.